In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for another beautiful day you have given each one of us. We are so excited, Lord, today as we continue on this journey that you have started in each of our lives. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for coming to this world and being our sacrifice, being that one who took away our sin, took away our shame, took away all that was due to us. And you became the sacrificial lamb on the cross. And thank you most of all, Lord Jesus, for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for your promise that you would never leave us, never forsake us. Spirit of God, today once again, this is your class. This is your time. This is your work. And we ask you, Spirit of God, to take complete control of each one of us. We belong to you, Lord. And we want you, Spirit of God, to be our teacher again today. Take complete control of all our faculties, our heart, our mind. Take complete control of our entire being. As you teach us the word, make this teaching simple, easy. Make it practical for us so that we can apply all that we are learning into our day-to-day -day lives. At this very moment, Spirit of God, anoint my heart, my lips, my vocal cords, my tongue. Nothing of me, everything of you. And help us, Lord, each one of us, as I speak the word, as we hear your voice, to take in everything that you are teaching us and do it and apply it in our day-to-day -day life and live the victorious life that you have promised us. We thank you and we praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I said to you at the beginning of this talk, we are continuing this journey that we have started of being rock builders. Now somebody who has just come in new and if you have not heard the three days talk of how God is looking for rock builders, you'll be wondering what is this building of rocks? What rock builders are we going to be? Are we going to stick? Are we all start, going to start working in the quarry, start breaking rocks? Are we going to build some houses? Are we going to build some bridges? Are we going to build some buildings? And you know, my brothers and sisters, when the, when the Bible talks about rock builders, when the Bible talks about people building their lives on the rock, that rock is no other than Jesus Christ himself. That rock is no other than the word of God itself. That rock is no other than the creator himself. And when we are building our house on the rock, we are building our house on something that is firm, something that is established, something that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. And that is the word of God, the same God who was, who, was, who is, and who will always be. He is the same Lord who was yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same Jesus, the unchanging Lord, who remains the same. His word does not change. His, firm, his word is firm as any foundation, better than any foundation this, this word or the, any man can ever make. And so, brothers and sisters, because we are building our house on the rock, because we are building our lives on the rock, because we are learning how to be rock builders, prosperity is one of those things by, by which we can build a house on the rock and receive a godly prosperity. Please understand, my brothers and sisters, Everything that we are going to receive in this life and beyond that for all eternity is going to be based on that decision that we are going to make by building our house on the rock of, that is the Lord Jesus Christ on the foundation of his word. And when we build that word, our life on the foundation and help others also to build their life on that foundation of God's word. We, in fact, are building our house solid that when the storm comes, when the rain comes, when the persecution comes, when anything comes against that house or against in our life, we will stand firm because that house will be built on that firm foundation of the unchanging, firm word of God. So today, brothers and sisters, we are going to take about, we are going to talk about how you and I 
can bring ourselves to live a prosperous life, a life which is according to God's promise. Please understand, we are not going to talk about investment in, in, in the share market. We are not going to talk about going to the bank and, you know, taking loans and starting a business. We are not talking about prosperity, what the world calls as prosperity, but we are going to talk about when we build a house on the rock, that is the firm foundation of the word of God, how you and I can live a prosperous life. Let us quickly turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 39 verses 1 to 6. Genesis chapter 39 verses 1 to 6 talks about Joseph, an Old Testament saint, and Joseph was the one who belonged, he was one of the sons of Jacob. Now please remember, Jacob had 12 sons. And, and, and Joseph and Ibrahim were the last two sons whom he loved very much. And Joseph was not belonging to the other 10 sons, but he was a son who was born on, in, in the late age of, uh, of uh, Jacob. So he loved Joseph very much, but his brothers hated Joseph to the point that Joseph was sold as a slave to the Ishmaelites. He was sold as a slave in Egypt. And we pick up the gospel where now Joseph has already reached Egypt. He is in the slave market and he has been bought by Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh. You know, uh, Potiphar was a very senior officer of the, of, the, of the Pharaoh of Egypt. And the Pharaoh was the number man, the ruler, the leader of Egypt at that time. And Potiphar was one of the very senior officers who purchased Joseph from the market. Now, please understand before we go and read this, uh, this passage from Genesis chapter 39 verses 1 to 6. Whenever a slave was sold in the market, please remember this. Whenever a slave was sold in the market, the slave was stripped naked right from the top to the bottom. He had no clothes on him. So anyone who came to buy a slave had to see the slave, had to inspect the slave that he had no defect on him. He had no fault on him. All his hands had to move properly. His legs had to be moved properly. He had to have a good health. He had to have a good physique. And the one who had a good physique would be the man whom the, whom the master would purchase so that he could use that person in order to do work in his house. So we're going to read this passage from Genesis chapter 39 verses 1 to 6. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. Now, brothers and sisters, we read in verse number two, the Lord was with Joseph. Please, I want your eyes and your focus to be on this one line. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a, and he became a successful man. Now I want you for a moment, my brothers and sisters, just to think for a moment. This man Joseph is standing in the market. He has been stripped naked. He has no clothes on him. He has no money on him. He has no freedom of his. He is a slave. And yet, just because he is not defective, just because he has absolutely all his parts of his body perfectly working, Potiphar buys him and the word of God says his master Ish, uh, Potiphar who bought him put him in charge we will see that later over his whole household but this verse number two says the Lord was with Joseph and he became a prosperous man he became a successful man. Now, the, the secret of Joseph becoming a successful man, if you read another version of the Bible, it says, and Joseph was a prosperous man. He has no freedom. He has no money. He has no bank balance. He has no freedom. He has no clothes on his, on his body to wear. And yet the Bible calls Joseph a successful man. He calls him a prosperous man. Brothers and sisters, if Joseph who is an Old Testament saint, 
He is a person whom the Holy Spirit could not live inside because Jesus is still not gone to the cross. Remember, Joseph was born at a time when Jesus had still not come onto the earth. Jesus had not paid the price for the sin of Adam. And yet, this man Joseph who is a slave, the Bible calls him a successful man, calls him a prosperous man. You know, my brothers and sisters, we all of us are living in the new covenant. Jesus has already died for us. And if we truly are born again, if we are truly belonging to Jesus, if we truly believe that Jesus is our Lord, God and Savior, then the Holy Spirit has made his residence inside of us. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, if the Bible can call Joseph a successful man, a prosperous man, without the Holy Spirit being inside of him, just because the Lord is with him. Why is the Lord with Joseph? The Lord is with Joseph only because Joseph is a godly man. Joseph does not want to do anything that is going to displease his God. Joseph is a God-fearing person. Joseph has been given a dream by the Lord and the Lord has said to him that one day he's going to have, a, he's going to be a ruler. But in the process that he's going to be a ruler, although he has been given a dream, this Joseph is right now a slave. He is right now a slave in the house of his master Potiphar. The, 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 the chances that he's going to be a ruler, the chances that there's going to be anything good in his life are absolutely zero because he can't see any, any hope because he's a slave. He has got no clothes, he's got no money, he's got no freedom, he's got nothing with him. He is a slave. But the Bible called Joseph a prosperous man only because the Lord is with Joseph. The Lord is with Joseph is because Joseph is obedient to the Lord. Joseph doesn't want to displease the Lord. Joseph wants to obey the, the word of God. Joseph doesn't want to do anything that is going to displease his God. And that is why Joseph is a prosperous man because God is with him. How much more brothers and sisters when we belong to the new covenant? I'm just laying a foundation for you and me to understand when we believe the Lord is with us, we are prosperous. Right now, you may not have enough money in your bank account. Right now, you may not even have a house of your own. Right now, you may not even have things that other people have. But praise God, if you can change your thinking, if you can believe that the Lord of heaven and earth is dwelling inside of you because you believe in Jesus, because you believe that he is your Lord, he's your God and he's your Savior, and you believe that you have, been, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you then you can call yourself a very successful person, my brothers and sisters. You can call yourself prosperous, not because of what you have, but because of whom you have. Let me say that again. When you want to say that you are prosperous, your prosperity is not decided by the goods that you have, not by the material goods that you have, but whom you have, then when you have the Holy Spirit with you, you, you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ has taken over you. You are possessed by God. And brothers and sisters, the reason I want to share this with you as, as, as a foundation, because when we have God's abiding word inside of us, when, the, when, when God lives inside of us through his spirit, when the word and the spirit that is one, John 6, 63, is inside of us, when Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 5, verse 15, he says, if, if you remain in me, John 15 verse 5, he says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you shall bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So brothers and sisters, as a, as a foundation, as a, as, as a beginning of this class, I want you to understand that unless the word of God is in our hearts, unless we are really allowing that abiding word to be in our hearts, we have kept that word treasure in our hearts and we are allowing the Holy Spirit to direct our life, you can call yourself prosperous because eventually, no matter what your situation is, no matter how negative your, 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 your circumstances of your life are, the whole situation is going to change because you're going to change your thinking, you're going to believe what your spirit says and you're going to receive everything from God. Let's go ahead and read from verse 3 onwards. Verse 3 to verse 6 onwards. 
His master saw that the Lord was with him. His master saw that the Lord was with him. Please remember my brothers and sisters, if the Holy Spirit is with you, if the Lord is with you, people around you can recognize that there is something in you which is different that they can see. Even people who are unbelievers, even people who don't know Christ, when you have the Spirit of God with you, when you are possessed by the living God, people can recognize. Remember, Potiphar did not belong to the covenant that God had with Abraham. Potiphar did not belong to the covenant that God had with Abraham. Whereas Joseph was the man who belonged to that covenant. Joseph belonged to the family of Abraham. God had made a covenant with, with Abraham and all his descendants through, the, through, the, through, the, through, the, through that process of circumcision. And therefore, Joseph belonged to the covenant that God had with, with, with man. But this man, Potiphar, did not have a covenant. He was a pagan. He was an Egyptian. And yet, his master saw that the Lord was with Joseph. That the Lord was with Joseph and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in the hands of Joseph. Can we read that verse 3 again, please? His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. Go ahead. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. Because Potiphar put Joseph in charge of all his household, Please understand, Joseph is a slave. He has been bought from the slave market. But the Lord is with Joseph. Potiphar can see the presence of God in Joseph. And he puts him in charge of his own household. And the word of God says, because of Joseph, the Lord blessed the house of the Egyptian. It was only because of Joseph's sake that Potiphar began to receive his blessings. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, when you are possessed by God, when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you are living according to the word of God. You have made the word of God your foundation. You are living not according to, your, to the philosophies of this world. You are not living according to what he said and she said and what a person with title said. You are taken the word of God and made it your highest authority. And when you make the word of God your highest authority, and you operate according to the spirit, and now you are working for somebody, can you imagine, because of you, that place is going to be blessed. If you are working in a company, that company is going to be blessed. If you are working in a community, that community is going to be blessed. If you are working in your parish, your parish is blessed. If you are going to work in any place, wherever you are going to put your hands, because the Lord is with you, that entire place is going to be blessed. Brothers and sisters, when we understand an Old Testament saint like Joseph, who still does not have the Holy Spirit because God is not living inside of him, but he, he is a God-fearing God person. And because he's a God-fearing person, God is with him. God is giving him the support from the outside. And Joseph is becoming a blessing to his household, to the household of Potiphar. Today, my brothers and sisters, when you and I have the Holy Spirit with us. We renew our mind. We operate according to God's word. We make the word of God our highest authority. No matter what the temptation comes. No matter who's telling us what to do. We are obedient to God's word. We have made the word of God our highest authority of our life. Anywhere we go, go anything that we do is going to be blessed. Please understand. You don't need to have a lot of money in your bank account. You don't need to have some title of your own. You don't need to have a big degree from college. You don't need to have, you know, Vasta from somebody. You don't need to know the prime minister or some president. You don't need to know the managing director. You only need to know the CEO of this universe. 
You need to know the managing director of this universe. You need to know the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And when you know his word and you know him and you know how the principle of God's kingdom works, you will be a prosperous person and anything that you do, you will bring prosperity in that place. Please understand my brothers and sisters. When we begin to understand that we have built a house on the rock, we have built a house on the foundation of God's word, that word within us, that power of God within us enables us to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are not blessed to, have, to only receive everything for ourselves. We are not blessed so that we will be building big castles in, 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 on this earth and be building mountains so that people will say how blessed he is. Prosperity in God's kingdom is not decided or not determined or not said that you are prosperous based on what you have, but it depends on whom you have. And even if you have to start from zero, my brothers and sisters, at this very moment of your life, but you know that you are building your house on the rock. You're building your house on the word of God. You're building your house on that sure foundation which can never be shaken. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, you are prosperous in God's eyes. And whatever you touch shall be blessed. You will be a blessing to the nations. You'll be a blessing so that you will bring others to, to, to be attracted to the word. You'll bring others to be attracted to Christ because Christ wants his people to be blessed. Christ wants his people to be prosperous. Christ wants his people to live as though they are in heaven here on earth. And brothers and sisters, when we begin to understand that we have the Holy Spirit, we have the abiding word in us, we will begin to bear the fruit of the kingdom. We will begin to bring so many other people into the kingdom because we are manifesting through our obedience through by making the word of God our final authority, we are manifesting God's glory on this planet earth. And that is why when you and I are prosperous, because we belong to Jesus, because we have built a house on the rock, we are advancing the kingdom of God. Please remember my brothers and sisters, the devil doesn't want the children of God to be blessed. We saw that in a previous class some two weeks ago. Why the devil doesn't want the children of God to be prosperous? Because when a child of God is prosperous, when a child of God who's truly made the, his, the word of God his final authority, he has received wealth, he receives money, he becomes a good steward. He will never keep it to himself, but he will become a good steward of the grace of God. He will go out and be a blessing to others. And through that blessing, he will bring God's glory and manifestation in the lives of people. If people want to be prosperous by putting their hands out, the world will always tell you, if you want to receive, you need to put your hand out. You need to ask. And you know, brothers and sisters, as we go further, we shall see that in order to become prosperous in God's kingdom, we don't need to put our hands out. We don't need to be the ones who are receiving, but we have to be the ones who are giving. You know, brothers and sisters, we have seen in these last few days, especially beginning from Monday, that when we are rock builders, when we build our lives on God's word and not on human philosophies, not on self-will, not on self-righteousness, not on self-satisfaction, but on the word of God, Jesus, the rock, allows us to build our life and we begin to see God kind of results in our life. We begin to see the result of making the word the highest authority in our life. Please remember my brothers and sisters, if you are not living a prosperous life, you are not living a life which is of abundance, check, go back and check whether you are really obeying God's word, whether you have really made the word of God your highest authority. It's not necessary that you come to a Bible class like this or you hear the word of God and after you hear the word of God, you close your book, you close your Bible and begin to live just like the world lives. There is no way that you and I are going to see God's, God's prosperity in our life. In order to see God's prosperity, making the word of God our lifestyle, obeying the word of God our lifestyle, making the, our, our life based on the rock should be something which is part of our life. If we have not built it so far, today is the day for us to make the necessary correction and receive the prosperity that God wants to give us. I want to take you now to Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7 talks about reaping and sowing. Sowing and reaping. Let us read that. Do not be deceived. 
God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Do not be mocked, my brothers and sisters. God is not mocked. You can't make a fool out of God. You can't try to play around with God. Don't be a God player. You can play with people. You can play with emotions of people. You can probably put up a movie and you know show a long face and ask people to give you help. But you can't mock God. God knows our inside. Please remember, what we sow is what we are going to reap. You cannot fool God. When we understand this truth in Galatians 6-7, it says, do not be mocked. You cannot mock God. You cannot make the play around with God. What you sow is what you reap. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us check our lives right now. What have we been sowing all this while? What are the words that are flowing from our mouth? What are the thoughts we are entertaining? What are the deeds that we are doing? Are we all this time, if, if our day begins early in the morning to the time we go to bed, if we take you know, an audit of what we are doing throughout the day, how much of our time we are spending in being givers? And how much of the time we are spending on our own self, on our own needs, on our own selfish things? Please remember, every opportunity that you and I can get to sow, whether it is our time, whether it is our energy, whether it is our talent, whether it is our money, whether it is our resources, anything that we are going to let go from our hands into the kingdom of God is going to be a seed that is sown. And when you sow that seed with love, brothers and sisters, whatever gets out of your hand is surely going to come back to you as a harvest. Remember, we have always seen that in the past class. When a farmer sows a seed, he doesn't sow one seed to get one seed in return. He sows one seed and that seed has to die so that that seed can produce 30, it can produce 60, it can even produce 100. So a seed has the potential of producing 100 different fruits from that one seed. So when a farmer throws a seed, he's not going to get back exactly what he sowed. He's going to get much more, 30, 60, 100. 30% is the minimum, 100% is the maximum. The more the seed that is sown with love, higher is the yield that is going to be obtained. Remember, my brothers and sisters, everything that we sow has to be sown with just one basic fundamental thinking. And that is everything needs to be sown with love. Please understand, if anyone forces you to do something, or because you know you have a feeling, or because you want to get rid of somebody, you just pour something into them, you just give them some time, you just give them some money, you just give them some of your resources, and you say, please don't bother me, just go away. If you think that what you have done is going to bring any harvest in your life, you are sadly mistaken. But if whatever you have done, whether it's your time, energy, money, resources, talent, whatever you do, like the right, right now in this class, every day before we begin, we have these three children, Aston, Bologna, and Valanka, who sing for us. If they have been singing for all these days, they have been singing out of love. They have been putting all their effort. They find, learn new songs. They are putting all their effort. They are spending time preparing, and they are excited about sharing. Whatever they are doing with love is only going to bless them because they are sowing in the kingdom of God. Their mother, sister Sukurina, along with the three children, make it a point to sow in this king, the kingdom of God. They are encouraging us, they are giving us the spirit. And brothers and sisters, every single little thing that you do, it's not about only money. Most of the time when people talk about sowing, they always try to think that how much is there in my purse. God is not interested in your money, brothers and sisters. God is not in it. He has everything you need. He is the owner. He is the creator. He has created the whole universe. So he is not interested in your money. He is not interested in your time. But he is interested in our hearts. And if our heart is filled with love, and whatever we do is done with love, even if people don't appreciate us, even if people don't say anything good about us, even if people criticize us, even if people discourage us, but we know that we are doing it out of love. That particular sowing that is done out of love is going to come back to us as a big, big harvest. So brothers and sisters, God cannot be mocked. Do not try to play God. Do not try to play the fool with God by thinking that, you know, we can do something and try to manipulate just we can manipulate man. 
we can never manipulate God. What we sow is what we are going to reap. And whatever we sow is going to be sown in love. It's going to be sown from that heart that has received the love of God. Brothers and sisters, there are so many people today in this world. There are so many people who do humanitarian acts. There are so many people what they call as uh, doing, you know, uh, acts of, you know, goodwill, goodwill work. They do, they do this uh, work to the clubs. I don't know what, what exactly term they use, but they, but they do something called feeding people, giving them house to stay, reaching out to people. But if that is all done without the ultimate goal of giving that person Christ, what is the use of all that brothers and sisters? If I'm going to provide somebody needs, only physical needs of theirs, I'm going to give them a roof above their house without giving them Christ. After they die from this earth, where are they going? Even if they have got the best house to live, even if they have got the best food to eat, even if they have been driving the best cars, if they don't have Christ, they don't have the word, they are going to be damned for all eternity. And therefore, brothers and sisters, when we begin to sow in somebody's life, when we begin to invest time sowing in love to somebody, our ultimate goal must be to give that person Christ, to give them the word, to give them the best of everything. And brothers and sisters, when we make that motive that in our giving, ultimately to give them Christ. Remember, my brothers and sisters, we are winning that soul for, for, the, for the kingdom of God. We are winning that soul because through our giving, we are bringing that soul into a relationship with Christ. If our giving is only going to help people only to receive, they are going to look at people, they are going to look at you and me to meet their needs without looking to the Lord, the very purpose of our giving will be defeated. When we give, we teach people through our giving how not to depend on us, not to depend on man, but to depend on this God who is waiting to give us everything when we have his word and when we have his spirit within us. At this point in time, I would like to invite my wife in order to share our testimony of how the Lord has helped us before we knew the word of God, how we operated by, you know, in our giving, how now by understanding God's word, how our lives have changed, how we begin to sow, not how we sowed before without knowing the word, just because we did it, because we wanted to feel good, but now we do it understanding God's word, doing what the word says, because by doing his word, we have seen God kind of results in our life. So at this moment, I'd like to welcome my wife to do and share her testimony. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Good afternoon for those who are uh, in, the, in the UK. And once again, I just want to thank God for giving me this wonderful opportunity to testify to his greatness, to his goodness, and to his awesome works that he has been doing in our lives. Uh, Vincent and I, we have, uh, we have been in, uh, in prayer, in, uh, in belonging to a complete community for a very long time. In fact, it started way beyond back in 1996 when we were just married for about a year. Uh, but what I want to say is that initially, when uh, we used to give, you know, it was mostly because of a feel-good factor, you know. Uh, I remember the times when we used to come down from, uh, from, from Bahrain and come to India. Uh, it was normally during the Christmas season and uh, we would, you know, buy a lot of uh, stuff and go and visit the orphanages and visit the old, visit the sick. And at the end of the day, it was a kind of a feel-good factor, you know, that uh, we felt that we were doing something, that uh, we were reaching out. But as I look back today, very often it was more because of what, you know, of what, uh, what, we, could, what we could show the world or what we wanted to portray ourselves as. To be honest, I don't remember a single time that when we went to these places, we would actually you know, sit down and pray with them or, uh, you, know, you know, teach them, teach them the word or share our lives. It was more just giving something and then, you know, feeling very, feeling very happy about it. Of course, that, that was, that was, at that time, that was our understanding of how we had to give. But I want to take you back to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. 
when it says, Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men give unto your bosom, for the measure you give will be given back to you. Now the word give, the word give, it's normally, it's going out, it's going out of your hand. Something that you are giving. But in the spiritual sense, when you are giving, it's actually, you are receiving something from the Lord. Because your hands are open up and you are actually giving of your time, your talent, your resources. But God in his abundant goodness is already filling you with more than you can ever expect. And that's how it works. So when you give, whatever you want to give, suppose you're giving, you want to receive love, you're giving love. If you want to receive some something, uh, uh, say some some particular thing that you are looking for, say you are you are looking for uh, 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 an increase in your finances, then you give you give your give out of your of your finances. So whenever you are giving, you are giving out of your out of yourself, out of your love, because God loves a cheerful giver. You are not giving out of compulsion. You are not giving out of a feel good factor. You're not giving because you're forced to give, but you're giving only out of the depths of your heart. You're giving out of your love. And when you give in that way, even making, you know, even if, even during the times when you when you don't have, you're still giving, God in his in his abundance is going to bless you and he's going to give you more than you can hold. Your cup will be overflowing. I want to share one time when Actually, Vincent had uh, lost his job and almost for seven, eight months, we had a very difficult period uh, in our finances. And, you know, it, it so happened that exactly at that time, probably there were so many people who didn't know what, what we were going through. And they continued to approach us to help them out. And then we realized there were, you know, there were people who were really struggling, struggling even more than us. And whatever we could give, from our, from whatever we had, you know, even making less for ourselves, we we gave, we gave it, you know, with a cheerful heart, not even expecting anything back from those people. And the Lord in His goodness was so so wonderful that you know He multiplied that small seed in ways that we could never imagine. That that you know, even when we came to India, God supernaturally provided for us. We came without without anything. In fact, we sold all of our stuff back in Bali. Normally people bring, you know, cargoes and uh, what we call ship loads of stuff when they come back to India. But for us, we just came with our clothes. We sold whatever we had. We never carried back anything. And from that point, God supernaturally provided for us. And as I look back today, I just see how awesome and how wonderful this God is. That when you give, you give little, little out of your love. You don't have to give a lot but you give just little, making something less for yourselves, God in his, in his super, super abundant way and, you know, provides, provides for your every, every single need. And right up to this point, there's not a single day that we are in lack of anything. It's not to boast, my dear brothers and sisters, but just to glorify and give all glory to this great God who is so true, his word is so true. The other thing I wanted to share is that when you're giving, when we when we give, you know, when you're giving out of love, it's very important to also make a prayer or make that person understand. Because in the long run, you don't want that person whom you're giving to be dependent on you. Whether you're giving your 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 love or your your uh, your your resources or you're giving them, you know, uh, giving them some some something else, that person doesn't have to look to you as their as their provider, but they have to make. Make the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings their ultimate source of what they want to receive. And that is so very important that whenever you give, you make a prayer along with that person. So that person from that, that point on will also become a giver because it works that way in, in, the, in the kingdom of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow will become another seed in that person's life so that that person will also become a giver. And that's how God multiplies, multiplies the seed. It is so beautiful because we have realized that when we have sown in somebody's life, eventually after a couple of months or a couple of years, we see that that person has prospered to such an extent that that person himself becomes a giver. And it's so beautiful when you see you know, somebody prospering because of the generosity of your heart. What you did at one time has bared such abundant fruit. So whenever 
you give to somebody, it's so important that you make a prayer of faith to that person. You pray that that seed which you have sown in their life becomes another seed, becomes a seed that is be going to be used by them and be multiplied so that they themselves will become givers and they will never never lack anything and they will not need to to you know to look for other people to give but they will look to God who is their, their, their source, who is their provider. The other thing that we want, I wanted to share is, as Vincent said before that it is so very important that your ultimate goal in giving is to bring that person to Christ. To make that person understand that Christ alone is their source of everything. Because when we have God with us, like Joseph, we are so prosperous that even if we don't have material stuff, we have him. We have him. And he, it's not important what we have, but whom we have. When we have Jesus, we have everything. And we need not look for anything else. And that is what, you know, that is what has happened in our life. That today, that our life has become, uh, you know, so beautiful only because of what the, what, what are the, what are the things and, and the, 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 the word that God has, has revealed to us and has allowed us to apply that word in our lives. All glory and praise to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, my dear sisters. So my brothers and sisters, just to continue where uh, what Melanie was just saying, she mentioned about that in, in Luke chapter 4, in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, we see that when we give, we need to give not because we are forced to give, not because we want to you know feel good or not because we are people who, you know, want our, you know, our names to come on the newspaper or want people to acknowledge us and, you know, put us on a, on a pedestal for our generosity. The important thing at the end of the day is God knows our heart. When God knows our heart and he knows the motive of our giving, you know, many times, brothers and sisters, we give and we want people to come to us and acknowledge us and say, you know, because of us. And many times when people, you go and help them, and after some time, they, then they never come back to you and they don't acknowledge you. If you have done it because you wanted to be acknowledged for what you did, and they don't come and acknowledge you, you are going to be broken. You are going to be upset because you did it. It was not the Lord in you who did it. So when you understand that it is not you or not me who's doing it, but it is the Lord in me, his love in me, that is allowing me and motivating me to go and give that love to somebody else. And every time we do our giving, brothers and sisters, if it is never motivated by love, it is never motivated by, you know, what the Lord has done in our life, our giving will be only dead works. Our giving will be just empty rituals. Our giving will be just like, you know, any philanthropic work or any, any work which is any humanitarian work. Our ultimate goal is to give Christ because we have received his love. And when we receive the love of Christ, when the Holy Spirit has poured that love inside of us, whatever we give, whether it's our money, whether it's our resources, whether it's our time, whether it's our talent, whether it is our singing, whether it is our prayer, anything that we give, even our testimony, if it is given not for our glory, but it's given to bring glory to God, that giving of us, which is motivated by love, is going to bring so much of goodness in our life. That little seed that we are going to sow is going to bring us great amount of blessing. Brothers and sisters, just to give you uh, another scripture which Melanie was talking about today was 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 10. That's what she touched upon. I want to just take it for a few moments with you. Let's read that. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Please understand, my brothers and sisters, when a person gives cheerfully, if, if my motive of giving is because of what I'm going to get, because the word of God says, when I sow, I'm going to get. So the moment I want to sow, 
I think, oh, I'm going to sow this, Lord. I'm sowing this, huh? I need so much of money. Please see that this money comes into my account. I'm having this reason that I need it. So if ever this is our motive, brothers and sisters, we are actually canceling everything that we are doing in our life. But if we are sowing out of love, without expecting anything in return, please understand, our motive of giving is only because of love, not because of somebody coming and putting a bat, bat on our back, not for somebody putting up their name in the newspaper, not for somebody to come there and say, you know, these people are very generous, not for putting your name on the on the on the bench of the of the church so that people will say this bench has been given by this family, not for the thing to be put in the church bulletin. There are so many people when they give, they need the announcement to be made. If the announcement is not made, they will never feel at peace. They will feel that, you know, they have done so much and yet they have not been acknowledged. Remember, my brothers and sisters, Jesus said, when, when your right hand gives, let your left hand not know. What your left hand gives, let your right hand not know. It doesn't mean literally that. Your right hand and your left hand is part of the same body. You will know that. But what the Lord was saying is, when you are giving anything, whenever you are doing anything out of love, let that be between God and you. Let it not be between anybody else. It is only between God and you and God who sees our hearts. God who sees on the inside of us. He realizes how cheerful we are in giving. How happy we are in giving. How much joyful we are in giving. This God who sees our heart can entrust with us with good stewardship. He will be, he'll make us stewards of his grace. So that not only he will bless us, but he'll bless us so abundantly because he can trust us with his blessings. Because God is never going to bless a miser. A God is never going to bless a person who's selfish. God is not going to give an abundance to somebody who wants everything for themselves so that their bank balance will overflow. And when their bank balance is overflowing, then they will take a part of it and give to somebody. God is not interested in such people. And therefore, brothers and sisters, when we do our giving... Even if we got two copper coins, just like that widow in, 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 in the temple treasury, she had only two copper coins and yet Jesus acknowledged her and she said, she has put in more than anybody else. So brothers and sisters, it is not what we have that decides our prosperity. It is whom we have. And when we have this God, just like Joseph, when we have the spirit of God with us, when we have the abiding word in us, and when this abiding word in us, allows us to go and share this love with others. Thus giving, this sowing is going to bring such a harvest in the kingdom of God. It is going to bring a change in the lives of those whom we are going to give. And eventually, brothers and sisters, we are going to be instruments of God to advance the kingdom of God. Please understand, a person who is a cheerful giver, a person who gives only because of what they have received from God, is a person who is blessed abundantly. A person who has only received can give. If you have never received something, you cannot give. You can only give what you have received, brothers and sisters. And if you have received this love from the Lord, if you have truly received the love put into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, no matter whatever little we have, we will sow it in the lives of others and we will be a blessing in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for giving us the understanding of your word today. When we build our house on the rock, when we build our house on the foundation of your word, when we make the word of God our highest authority and we allow, Lord, this love that you have poured into our hearts to be shared among your, our brothers and sisters with the only sole goal of giving them Christ and advancing the kingdom of God. Lord, we make people whom we sow now dependent not on us, not dependent on man, but are dependent on you, the creator. And Lord, for giving us this understanding, for helping us to build a house on the rock in every area of our life, we thank you and we praise you, Father, in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen.